Hola, I'm Daisy Martinez and welcome to Latin Cooking 101. Everybody has their own recipe for making alcapurias, but my favorite way to make al alcapurias is with yuca, which is this, um, this root vegetable, and you can see yuca is very, very perishable, so they coat it with wax to help preserve it, much like they would a cucumber. And we're going to be peeling that thick, um, uh, waxy skin right off. And I'm going to make that with equal parts yaltia, which is a softer root vegetable, uh, mild, almost sweet in flavor, um, one of my favorite viandas. I really love this. Even just boiled with a little bit of olive oil and... Um, a little uh, ensalada de bacalao, ooh, or even some picadillo, yummy, delicious. So to peel the yuca, I'm going to take the top off and the bottom. When you buy a yuca, you want to feel it. You want to make sure that there's no soft, rotten spots. You want it to be nice and firm. I'm going to go ahead and just take that, that thick, woody skin right off all the way through to the beautiful white pristine meat inside. You can see that little speck in the middle of the yuca. That's going to be your guideline. I'm going to have the yuca right around there and I'm going to show you why. There is a long fibrous root that runs down the center of a yuca and you really need to get rid of that before cooking. You just follow it right down and get rid of it. And then we're going to add, oh, you can see over here, if you lose your way, there it is again. You see it? So you can follow it. Wherever you have the yuca, you can follow it. And then we're just going to go ahead and put this in salt water so it doesn't discolor. My second favorite vianda is the yautia, cousin to malanga. Malanga is very similar to yaltia, but it has a pinkish lavender color. Uh, and again, it's very, the meat is very mild, almost with a touch of sweetness. Uh, it's got delicious mouth feel. It's, um, it's soft, almost like uh, the density of a potato, as opposed to the yuca, which is much, a uh, much harder root. Uh, and to fix our, our um, yaltia, we're just going to top and tail again. And I'm going to use my Y peeler to get rid, and you see this beautiful, creamy, white flesh inside. This, this is the yuca, and you're going to see how different this is. It's almost pebbly. You see it coming down off the, off the, uh, the grater. So now we have a piece of yaltia. Look how different. You see how much creamier it is than the yuca. Our very, very basic mosa for our alcapurias. A beautiful golden yellow color from the achote, and I've tasted it's good for salt. If it needs yours, needs more salt, add a little more. And pepper, of course, that's a matter of taste. You could also add some fresh cut cilantro or parsley, or even a little bit of heat uh, if you're so inclined. This, again, this is very, very basic. And when I come back, I'm going to show you a couple of fillings to make so you can fill your alcapurias with lots of delicious yumminess. Be right back. delicious picadillo filling that you can use for acapurias or empanadas or relleno de papas. In short, anything that you want to stuff. Today I'm going to show you a delicious crab filling for alcapurias.
So today, I'm going to put a little daisy spin on those, on those uh, crab al capurias. Of course, you can make crab al capurias um, using fresh crab meat and a little sofrito like we did our picadillo, just a very, very basic, almost like a salmorejo de, de huellas with a little sofrito and tomato sauce and uh, alcaparrado and stuff. But let's change things up a bit and make them a little bit exciting. I have some chorizo here that I took out of the casing. And I love the sweetness of the crab with the saltiness and the garlickiness of the, of the chorizo. Yum. How about that for a contrast in flavors? And I just want to mix that lightly. You guys know what this is. This is like uh, the... the um, the poison of my choice. This is an habanero that I've halved, complete with seeds and ribs, and that's going in there too. And then I have a, fre a little bit of parsley for freshness, and then the, the zest, and green, and the juice of a lime. And there you have our lovely crab filling for our alcapurias. I'm going to be back in just a second to show you two fillings for delicious alcapurias for your next party. One with our traditional uh, uh, beef and pork picadillo, and one with um, shrimp and chorizo. A little bit of heat, some parsley for freshness, and a little bit of zip from citrus. And let's go ahead and open one of these babies. Oh boy, I got a crab one. And you can see the masa is cooked all the way through. Yes, look at that. And that was we have the beautiful beef and pork picadillo with the chapta caparrado in it to give it a little bit of brine, a little bit of saltiness, cumin, salt and pepper. We have the, the beautiful sofrito in there and the tomato paste to bring it all together to bind it. Oh. If that doesn't taste like a party, I don't know what what, what does. It's a capulla time at Daisy's house. <laughs> Buen provecho.